I um, have to cut that short, I'm afraid, because we're going to New York. Our correspondent Ian Woods is in New York for us. Uh, the verdict has come in in the Harvey Weinstein uh, sex assault trial and he has been found guilty. Ian, tell us more. He has been found not guilty of the two most serious charges, but th uh, three guilty verdicts in the lesser charges. Let me run those through for you now. The two most serious charges were of predatory sexual assault of two women, Miriam Haley in 2006 and Jessica Mann in 2013. Uh, he has been found not guilty of those charges, but he has been found guilty of the criminal sexual assault in the first degree of Miriam Haley, rape in the first degree of Jessica Mann, and rape in the third degree of Jessica Mann. Now, those charges that he's been found guilty of uh, carry a maximum prison sentence of 25 years and a minimum, we believe, of five years. So Harvey Weinstein has been found guilty of these three charges. It was a complex case because uh, even though there were dozens of allegations being made in the media uh, by various women uh, about Harvey Weinstein over the last two and a half years since articles first started appearing in the media uh, about it, uh, prosecutors in New York had to select what they felt were the, the cases that they felt were the best chances of getting criminal convictions. So they selected the cases of Miriam Haley and Jessica Mann, but their stories about being attacked by Harvey Weinstein were backed up by testimony from other women who had similar allegations to make, but in some cases those allegations happened so long ago that uh, they would not have been legally admissible, but they were heard in court to be able to back up this, na this, this claim of a predatory sexual nature, but the jury apparently have not been convinced of that. They came back on Friday afternoon after around 20 hours of deliberations through last week to say that they were deadlocked on those two most serious charges and the judge told them to still go away and think about it have the weekend to relax and then come back and make their decision on Monday morning. They have done that after just a couple of hours deliberation uh, this morning and now we await for the reaction from the lawyers afterwards. Uh, we wouldn't expect uh, Harvey Weinstein to be sentenced uh, today, uh, so we don't know whether he will come out of this court building, whether he will still be bailed pending his sentence, uh, but certainly his lawyers will react and they will almost certainly appeal against these guilty convictions. Uh, Ian, we're hearing that he's been found uh, guilty of third degree rape as well. Yes, those are the three charges. So, the, the, of the five charges, guilty of first degree rape, guilty of uh, uh, third degree rape, and also of, of um, criminal sexual assault in the first degree of uh, Miriam Haley. So, as I say, these charges, even though there were five charges, if he'd been found guilty of the two most serious charges, that's all the jury would have had to have done. They wouldn't have had to even consider the lesser charges. Those lesser charges were there as an alternative if they felt that the two most serious charges, that of predatory sexual assault and what they mean by that is it wasn't just against one woman it had to be against uh, at least two women uh, they decided there was not sufficient evidence to convict harvey weinstein of those offenses but there was sufficient evidence to convict him of the lesser charges so uh, and this is not the end of the legal path for harvey weinstein regardless of any possible appeal in new york he's also got to face uh, charges uh, brought by uh, uh, the uh, prosecutors in california uh, two women there uh, have made uh, similar allegations and of course, dozens of women have come forward with stories about how they felt that Harvey Weinstein had abused him. But as I say, the uh, prosecutors had to deliberate as to what were the, the cases that were most likely to secure a conviction. And the fact that two of the charges have failed, uh, he's been found not guilty of the two most serious charges, just goes to show how difficult it can be to convince a jury to convict in matters like this where there is no uh, evidence of, uh, of a nature that is forensic or anything like that. It becomes one woman's word against uh, uh, another. Uh, and although Harvey Weinstein uh, didn't uh, defend himself, didn't speak in his own defense during the case of this trial, his lawyer argued that the sense the, that any sexual activity which had occurred uh, was uh, consensual and was also, as she put it, transactional as well, that these women who were trying to further their careers uh, allowed themselves to uh, uh, form relationships with Harvey Weinstein to benefit themselves and one of the difficulties that the prosecution have had to explain and they brought in uh, uh, expert witnesses to do this was uh, not only why the women didn't come forward with uh, um, uh, accusations to the police uh, 
uh, at the time, um, why they didn't report these at the time, um, but also, you know, why it has taken, you know, so long for them to, to come forward. Were they just jumping on a bandwagon once they heard that other people were making similar allegations? Let me just clarify, he's been found guilty on two charges. So a bit of a mixed message coming from inside court. So. Uh, guilty on two charges, uh, but not guilty on three of the charges. As I say, uh, the jury came into court about ten minutes ago uh, with the details and the, uh, the judge and the jury and uh, everyone who's been in courtroom 19, 99 on the 15th floor of this building above me have been listening to those charges. So we'll get some sort of clarification on that just to be absolutely accurate, but I think we are absolutely accurate to say that he's been found not guilty of the two most serious charges of predatory sexual assault, but convicted of lesser charges which in themselves still uh, merit jail time. Yeah, what may happen now? How much jail time could he face for these so-called lesser charges, Ian? Steph? Yeah, lesser charges are still carrying a, a, a large uh, jail sentence, a minimum of five years and a maximum of 25 years, uh, we are led to believe, uh, by, pre, by the, sort of the guidelines from the, uh, the New York courts. So that is something which we'll hear more about when it comes to the sentencing phase of this trial. Um, you know, during the course of uh, the, the trial, and it has lasted for the best part of two months, we had two weeks of jury selection, then around four weeks of evidence and uh, closing statements, and then the jury began their deliberations uh, last Tuesday morning. So it has been a fairly uh, extensive business. And during the course of the trial, uh, a lot of the women who came forward with stories, not just the two victims who were on the charge sheet, but also those who were backing up the stories, they all waived their rights to anonymity and uh, came uh, into the court, uh, passed the media cameras and gave testimony uh, of the most intimate details uh, about uh, the, uh, the sexual encounters that they had had uh, with uh, Harvey Weinstein. And as his defense attorney uh, had said at some points to the jury in, in, in summing up, uh, she said that Donna, Donna Rotona, who's uh, Weinstein's lawyer, said, you don't have to like Mr. Weinstein. This is not a popularity contest, but you have to remember that we are not here to criminalize morality. But despite that, the jury, as I say, have convicted him of two charges. And as I say, there is another charge, two more charges that he has to face uh, in Los Angeles at some point in the future. Uh, yeah, just to recap on what Ian has been saying, Harvey Weinstein has been convicted on two out of the five counts he faced. That's what we understand at the moment. As Ian said, quite a confused picture uh, coming out of court initially. Uh, cr criminal sexual act in the first degree and rape in the third degree. We're talking about some potential jail time here, Ian. But let's talk about the wider context of this. This is really being seen as a landmark moment in the era of Me Too. It has. I mean, this is something which, as I say, started two and a half years ago when newspaper articles started appearing about uh, Harvey Weinstein. Uh, he knew that uh, people were beginning to talk uh, to the media. Uh, he organized uh, uh, investigators to try to track down more information as to what was being said about him so that he was well prepared uh, when these allegations did uh, enter the public domain. And once a few people started to come forward with their stories, then more and more women started to come forward, not just with stories about Harvey Weinstein, but how they believe they had suffered at the hands of men abusing their power in other aspects of not just show business but the wider corporate world. Uh, it became the Me Too movement and so many uh, women came forward to say that uh, events that had happened in their past which they felt they were unable to report at the time but they now feel felt more free to come forward because they could see that other women were coming forward with similar stories. Now, um, in, in trying to say that Harvey Weinstein, just because he has been convicted of assaulting two women, as he has been uh, in this case in New York, uh, everyone will wonder, well, does that mean that he is guilty of uh, many others, uh, that uh, other people have made similar complaints? Well, that's not the case legally, uh, because uh, prosecutors, as I say, uh, felt that they could only bring forward cases that they had a legitimate chance they felt of getting a prosecution. Uh, some, they thought that the allegations were uh, too old to prosecute. There was one, for example, uh, Annabella Shora, who is an actress uh, who has appeared in The Sopranos. Uh, she was giving evidence in this case 
case as a backup on the predatory sexual assault allegation because she told uh, the jury how she had been assaulted uh, more than 20 years ago. Uh, she said that Harvey Weinstein had uh, forced his way into his apartment, uh, raped her, and then told her afterwards to keep quiet about it, uh, threatened uh, her. So she was able to come to court even though um, it was too late for the uh, prosecutors to bring charges related to what she said had happened to her. She was there to testify to a, a pattern of behaviour uh, by Mr Weinstein. Um, if you're just joining us, the breaking news from New York that Ian Woods, our correspondent, is talking about Harvey Weinstein, the former film producer, the former Hollywood producer, has been found guilty of rape and a criminal sexual act. Uh, guilty of rape in the third degree and a criminal sexual act in the first degree. He faced five uh, counts. He's been found not guilty of three guilty of two. What happens next, Ian? Because the American legal system is a complicated one. Is there a move for appeal here uh, from his defence team? You'll almost certainly find that they will uh, they'll mount an appeal. Whether they will confirm that straight away after the court case, I don't know. I expect that they will. They will uh, uh, be encouraged, I think, the fact that uh, he was acquitted of two of the most serious charges. So that will lead them to think that they would stand a good chance of winning a future uh, appeal. Who knows? But as I say, uh, what will happen to him today is, is something we've got to uh, hear from inside the court. Uh, the judge, James Burke, has got to decide whether uh, the bail on which uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein has been able to come and go over the last seven weeks and it's become a pretty familiar sight every day as he gets out of uh, a limousine and his aides hand him a walking frame to try to come into court and he shuffles slowly, uh, apparently because he had back surgery uh, a few months ago. Uh, will we see him shuffling back out of court today? We saw him arriving around about two and a half hours ago for his, uh, his uh, latest uh, day in court. Will he be leaving? I think it's likely that uh, his uh, lawyers will argue that that bail should still hold until a sentencing hearing is held. Again, we don't know whether that would be within days or within weeks. Uh, but we have seen in the past uh, some pretty uh, serious charges being, uh, uh, some pretty famous people being found guilty of some pretty serious charges and not actually going to jail until several weeks or, or months after the jury have actually found them guilty. Such is the system and how it operates here. But we'll try to find out more information from what is happening right inside the court now. I should say that we are outside talking about this because there are no cameras inside the court. Uh, the judge decided that it should not be something that should be televised, uh, but he was allowed, uh, he did allow uh, cameras just outside the corridor. So we've seen comings and goings, but not what has actually been happening inside courtroom 99. Ian Woods in New York, thank you for the moment. We'll have much more on this coming up for you at five o'clock as the re jury returns its verdict in the Harvey Weinstein uh, sex attack court case. He's been convicted on two out of five counts. It's five o'clock. You're watching the news hour. I'm Mark Austin. Coming up in the next 60 minutes. Breaking news this evening. Harvey Weinstein found guilty of sexual assault but cleared of three of the five charges. We'll have all the latest from New York on what this means for the disgraced movie mogul and the Me Too movement. Good evening, we begin the news hour with breaking news from the rape trial of Harvey Weinstein in New York. In the last hour, the disgraced movie mogul has been found guilty of two of the five charges he faced. They are rape in the third degree and a criminal sexual act in the first degree. Let's go live to New York, where our correspondent Ian Woods is uh, waiting for us. Uh, hi, Ian. And so the jury at last has made its decisions. Yes, on the fifth day of deliberations, after more than 25 hours, the jury came back into courtroom 99, uh, courtroom 99 a short time ago and delivered their verdicts. They delivered not guilty verdicts on the two most serious charges, that of predatory sexual assault, but they did deliver uh, guilty verdicts on the two of the lesser charges. But when I say lesser charges, let's not trivialise it. They are still charges, one of which fit, carries a maximum of 25 years in jail. Sentencing will come at a later date. We'll find 
finds out how that goes. But essentially, of the five charges that were uh, involved in this case, they were involving two women. They were Miriam Haley, an attack in 2006 in which she said that uh, Harvey Weinstein forced himself on her and had uh, to have oral sex in his apartment. And in 2013, uh, an alleged rape of Jessica Mann in 2013. But the prosecution had tried to bring in evidence of other attacks uh, that other women claimed they had been subjected to by Harvey Weinstein uh, to suggest that this was predatory sexual behaviour. Predatory sexual behaviour is a charge which can only be uh, brought and convicted on if it involves more than one woman. That's why they brought in other women to try to back up the claims of Jessica Mann and Miriam Haley. But the jury have rejected those more serious charges. We knew when they came back on Friday to tell the judge that they were deadlocked on those charges, that it was going to be something that they were still, some of them were still struggling with. Uh, they had two more hours of deliberation this morning and decided that he was not guilty of those two most serious charges which could have carried life imprisonment. But they have found uh, him guilty of a third degree rape and also criminal uh, sexual assault. Now, the judge and the lawyers and Harvey Weinstein are still in court at the moment. Uh, the jury have been uh, dismissed for now but will be brought back into the courtroom uh, shortly. Uh, let me just take you through some of the evidence that was heard during the course of uh, this trial. It was a trial which uh, lasted for almost two months. We had two weeks of jury selection first of all then four weeks of actual evidence and uh, cross-examination and closing statements. But let me give you an example of flavour of some of the evidence that some of the uh, women who testified in this case, and they waived their anonymity to be able to do so, uh, came forward to say. Miriam Haley said, uh, talking about Harvey Weinstein, of course, he was coming forward towards me physically, and I was backed into a bedroom that was on the corner of that open space area. I walked backwards because he was pushing me with his body until I got to the bed, and I fell backwards onto the bed, and I tried to get up, and he pushed me down. Haley continued, I just said, no, no, I don't want this to happen. And then when Jessica Mann was giving evidence, uh, she talked about her contact with the movie producer. She said, I know the history of my relationship with him. I know it was complicated and difficult, but that doesn't change the fact that he raped me. But his lawyer, Donna Rotono, told the jury, you don't have to like Mr. Weinstein. This is not a popularity contest, but you have to remember that we are not here to criminalize morality. The challenge for prosecutors was to explain to the jury why these women hadn't reported the allegations at the time, why they'd only come forward two and a half years ago when stories started to appear in the media. They produced expert witnesses to talk about how uh, some women uh, don't believe uh, it, it has uh, been a rape that happened to them. One of the women who testified, Annabella Shora, said that she had imagined rape as being something that happened in a dark alleyway with a stranger, not with someone that you know. She didn't categorize what happened to her as rape. But years later, she now recognised, she said, that it was rape. However, the jury didn't actually accept that what Annabella Shore, the actress on The Sopranos, was like, because if they had, they would have convicted him of the two most serious offences of predatory uh, sexual assault. Yeah, and Ian, what about um, sentencing? I mean, the charges he has been found guilty of, presumably, are enough to lead to many years in prison. Yeah, I mean, one of them has a minimum of five years and a maximum of 25 years. Uh, that's the criminal sexual assault. So. Uh the, the expectation would be a long prison sentence. Uh, when the sentencing will be carried out, we don't know. We don't know at this stage, and no doubt legal arguments are going in behind those closed doors in uh, the courtroom 99 on the 15th floor of this building uh, to discuss whether or not Harvey Weinstein will be allowed out of court today and walk down the steps with his walking frame as he has done over the past seven weeks, or whether he'll be taken away to go to jail. I've no doubt his lawyers will be arguing that the bail he is currently on should be sufficient and should be extended until the sentencing has been uh, handed down. But as I say, those are arguments which are still going on at the moment. If you're wondering why uh, I'm outside the court and there's a camera in the corridor uh, inside the court, but there's no camera inside court, well, James Burke, the judge, decided uh, in the preparations for this trial uh, to be fairly strict in his, uh, his rulings that there was not going to be any cameras allowed in court. There was to be no even tweeting in court. I will betide you if you produced your telephone while you were inside the courtroom uh, itself. A police officer would very quickly come and uh, ask you to leave uh, straight away. So very strict uh, uh, rules were Im imposed on how this case should be reported. But at the same time, 
Uh, cameras are allowed in the courtroom just outside. We saw the witnesses and indeed the defendant you know, come and go on a daily basis. And as I say, those women who reveal some very intimate details of their lives, which in many cases when trials like this are held, uh, those, uh, that sort of evidence is given behind a curtain. The women aren't identified. But in this case, they appeared in open court and walked past cameras and their pictures and their names were published by the, uh, the media at their agreement uh, as they testified against Harvey Weinstein. Ian, of course, it's much more than just a court case. It has been a highly significant moment for the Me Too move, mo, uh, movement. And I think more than 80 women in all have made accusations against Harvey Weinstein of sexual misconduct, stretching back decades. So this is something which has much broader significance. Yes, and will lead to more legal action in the future, whether or not it's more criminal charges. And we know that two more criminal charges are outstanding in California. There are many of these women who have come to the court uh, building here in New York in the early stages of the trial. And if they'd known when the verdict was being delivered, I dare say they would have been here for the closing as well. But that's something that they couldn't uh, predict. But many of those who came uh, still insist that even though their accusations haven't been turned into criminal charges to prosecute Harvey Weinstein, uh, for whatever reason, that there wasn't uh, sufficient legal grounds or time limits to be able to make that happen. Uh, they still believe that they wanted their stories to be told anyway, and some of them are pursuing their own private prosecutions, uh, trying to sue uh, Harvey Weinstein. Of course, he was uh, completely... Um, uh, ostracized by the world of show business, which had uh, once uh, had him at the very uh, heart of, uh, of Hollywood. Uh, he uh, lost his, uh, uh, his direct involvement in his, uh, his own company. Uh, Miramax was his original company and the, uh, the Weinstein company as well. So he, now that he has been convicted, he is certainly obviously not going to be making a, a return uh, to movie producing uh, ever. Uh, and even if he had been acquitted on all these charges with another trial pending and his reputation in tatters simply because of all the stories that women have been coming forward to tell about their experiences, uh, his movie career was at an end. But this is a man who was responsible for you know, many of the most, uh, the biggest blockbuster movies and worked with some of the, the top Hollywood talent uh, over many years. But uh, the women who came forward told the story of how they felt he had abused his position to people who were trying to get into the business or make progress in the business, how uh, they were uh, subjected to uh, assaults or worse, um, and they didn't tell anybody about it because they felt that their careers would be destroyed if they came forward. Uh, we've had expert testimony during the course of this trial from uh, an, an expert uh, forensic psychologist who talked about how women don't necessarily uh, come forward to the police after a sexual assault or, or a rape. Uh, some of them simply want to forget about it. They want to erase it from their minds. And that was used by the prosecution to explain why the women in this case didn't go to the police at the time but came forward many years later as stories emerged that they weren't the only ones that this had happened to. Yeah, and we mentioned the other accusations and you mentioned then the other trial. This is a trial, um, tell me about it, it's on the other side of the country in Los Angeles and what does that involve, Ian? Well, again, that involves accusations uh, by uh, two women. Again, similar allegations to what we have heard uh, here in New York. Um, we are told that that trial will progress at some point later this year, uh, regardless of whether or not Harvey Weinstein had been convicted of offences uh, here uh, in New York. Uh, but that uh, trial was something the charges were uh, actually levelled just before this trial in New York uh, got uh, underway. Uh, so that is something that uh, Harvey Weinstein and his lawyers will be battling as well but before they get to that stage I'm sure they're going to be trying to mount an appeal against these convictions these two convictions let me remind you uh, in New York one of rape in the third degree and one of criminal sexual assault yeah and uh, what do you expect to happen uh, in in the coming uh, minutes outside the court there well, we're told that the district attorney uh, will come out and make a statement in the corridor, which you can uh, see in the, 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 the pictures uh, from the, the camera position, which is inside uh, the court building. We're told that there will be some sort of statement there. There will be a statement, I've no doubt, from Gloria Allred, who represents uh, many of the women who've made accusations against Harvey Weinstein. Uh, 
we would expect probably to hear from his defence attorneys as well, especially if they are talking about mounting an appeal. Will we hear from Harvey Weinstein? Well, that entirely depends on whether or not he is given bail. If he is led away uh, from the courtroom out of sight of the cameras, well, then clearly we won't hear from him. If he is given bail, well, then he has to run the gauntlet of uh, media uh, presence here, photographers and reporters, as he has done going into and out of court every single day of this trial. The, he has had some interaction with the media uh, on, his, uh, on occasions. He does answer uh, a few questions, usually about how he is, and uh, uh, on the first day of his trial, he was asked if he thought he'd get a fair trial, and he said, yes, because I've got good lawyers. So uh, he can't complain about the, uh, the way the trial has proceeded, although many of his, uh, some of his lawyers have made arguments to the judge uh, over the course uh, of the past uh, few weeks uh, about uh, how they felt that uh, witness testimony that they felt should be disregarded uh, because it was irrelevant. The judge allowed some of that testimony uh, to be heard. So it has been a constant battle between the prosecution and the defence as to what was actually presented in front of the jury. OK, Ian, thank you very much indeed. And we'll be straight back to you, of course, uh, when uh, anything happens outside the court. But for now, thank you very much. And just to reiterate, the former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of uh, sexual assault and a third-degree rape by a New York jury, uh, but acquitted of uh, the more serious charges that uh, could have sent him to prison for the rest of his life, but he still faces uh, several years in prison on those charges that he has been convicted of. And as I say, we'll be right back to uh, New York uh, as and when we get lawyers speaking outside. OK, Ed Thomas, thank you very much indeed. And let me take you straight back to uh, New York. And Ian Woods, our correspondent, is uh, outside the court where Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of sexual assault but acquitted of uh, two of the more serious charges. Ian can join us now. So, Ian, you've got some more information, I gather. Yeah, a couple of things to update you with. First of all, we were discussing whether or not his bail would continue and whether he would come out of court until sentencing. No, he has been handcuffed and he has been taken into custody. He will be sentenced on March the 11th. So Harvey Weinstein is going to be spending tonight in jail. The Silence Breakers movement, some of the women who made uh, these accusations against him have released a statement in the last few minutes saying, while it is disappointing that today's outcome does not deliver the true, full justice that so many women deserve, Harvey Weinstein will now forever be known as a convicted serial predator. This conviction would not be possible without the testimony of the courageous women and the many women who have spoken out. So uh, March the 11th is when we will find out exactly how long Harvey Weinstein will have to serve in jail. It'll be between five and 25 years, but tonight he's going to be spending in jail. OK, Ian, thanks very much for that. And of course, we'll be right back with you with any more developments, but it's a busy hour, this. So OK, Tobias Elwood, sorry it's so short, but appreciate your time. Thanks very much. And as I said, let's go back to New York, where the uh, district uh, attorney is uh, speaking about the uh, former Hollywood producer, Harvey Weinstein, who has been uh, convicted of sexual assault. And uh, can we see the... Thank you for, for being here. Dawn Dunning, Miriam Haley, Jessica Mann, Annabella Shora, Tarale Wolf, Lauren Young, Megan Hast, Joan Iluzi Orbon. Eight women who have changed the course of history in the fight against sexual violence. These are eight women who pulled our justice system into the 21st century by declaring that rape is rape and sexual assault is sexual assault no matter what. Rape is rape, whether it's committed by a stranger in a dark alley or by an intimate partner in a working relationship. It's rape, whether it's committed by an indigent person or a man of immense power, prestige, and privilege. Rape is rape, whether the survivor reports within an hour 
within a year or perhaps never. It's rape despite the complicated dynamics of power and consent after an assault. It's rape even if there is no physical evidence and even if it happened a long time ago. This is the new landscape for survivors of sexual assault in America, I believe, and this is a new day. It's a new day because Harvey Weinstein has finally been held accountable for crimes he committed. The women who came forward courageously and at great risk made that happen. Weinstein is a vicious, serial sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate, and silence his victims. He has been found guilty of criminal sexual act in the first degree and will face on that count a state prison sentence of no less than five years and up to 25 years. To the jurors, I want to thank the jurors for their service and careful attention. Their verdict turned the page in our justice system on men like Harvey Weinstein. I want to say thank you to the assistant district attorneys, paralegals, and analysts who worked on this case, including Maxine Rosenthal, Kevin Wilson, Shannon Goldberg, Carrie Dunn, John Irwin, Alyssa Marino, Andy Clark, Danny Mejia Cruz, Stephanie Littell, and Emily Hogan, and especially to Harriet Galvin, Megan Hast, and Jonah Luzi Orban, who conducted a terribly difficult and meticulous investigation and performed masterly a trial under the brightest of spotlights. And finally, to the survivors of Harvey Weinstein. I owe, and we all owe, an immense debt to you, who had the courage beyond measure to speak your story to the world, to this courtroom, at great personal risk, and in great personal pain. To those of us who were privileged to be in the courtroom when they testified, you know what I mean. These survivors weren't just brave, they were heroic. Words can't describe adequately the sacrifices the survivors made to pursue justice. Weinstein, with his manipulation, his resources, his attorneys, his publicists, and his spies, did everything he could to silence the survivors. But they refused to be silent. They spoke from their hearts, and they were heard. They were heard by Weinstein's other survivors and by sexual predators all over the world. They sacrificed their privacy and self-protection, knowing better than anyone the extent of Weinstein's power, manipulation, retribution, and abuse. To them, I would say, you broke silence to hold him accountable. And believe me when I say that because you have done so, a generation of sexual assault survivors and all of us heard your every word. Thank you. I'll take a couple of questions. Sir, are you fully satisfied with this verdict, or do you feel in some way you came up short? You just mentioned could be as little as five years. Well, I'm certainly not dissatisfied by the verdict. I think this was a very difficult case, uh, a very challenging case, uh, and a case that uh, really moved our understanding of what sexual assault is, where it can occur, shattered myths that I think have been part of the criminal justice system for a long time. So I believe a B felony conviction with a maximum of up to 25 years uh, is, uh, is, it, it is not the top counts in the indictment, but by no means uh, do I, am I disappointed uh, with the jury's unanimous statement that Harvey Weinstein is guilty of sexual assault and rape. Any other questions? Uh, some of the women like Annabella Shore and uh, Jessica Mann, it appears the jury repudiated their testimony. Do you have any concerns that women are going to have to endure such terrible cross-examination that they endured at the hands of Weinstein's lawyers? Well, I think with regard to Jessica Mann, Harvey Weinstein was, commit, was convicted for rape in the third degree. Uh, uh, Ms. Shore took great risk and was in substantial pain testifying about what happened to her uh, many years ago. 
I can't look behind the jury's verdict uh, or how they arrived at that. Uh, we have to respect that process. But by no means is it a statement uh, uh, against Ms. Shura or uh, against anything that she said in court. Jurors find a way through to a solution that they believe adequately brings them all together with a unanimous verdict. In terms of the cross-examination, uh, I think we saw cross-examination, uh, the, the kinds that we've seen for years and years and years. I hope that with this verdict, uh, it will become more obvious that those kinds of attacks on the, on the survivors and victims when they're on the stand, uh, making it seem like it's all their fault, uh, will be realized as legal attacks that just simply are no longer going to work in this day and age, and it's time that lawyers stop using them and continuing uh, the myths uh, that I think the jury verdict busted today. Hey, Vance, what's your message to women about coming forward? Because someone's questioned why did it take the women so long to come forward. What's your message to women who may be attacked, whether it's today or last year? What's your message to well, them? First of all, I would say that, uh, Dean, with this, it was Dean, right? Uh, with, with this... With this verdict, uh, I hope that survivors will see that in this justice system, prosecutors, judges, and juries will believe them. Uh, even when the facts are not simple, and even when the dynamics of the relationships between the survivors and the abuser are complicated. So I think, Dean, the message is this is a big day. This is a new day. And I hope women will, uh, I hope women will understand the significance of the jury verdict uh, today. Uh, in terms of the time it takes to report a sexual assault, Dean, you know, we cannot put ourselves in the shoes of a victim of sexual assault to understand what is going through his or her mind. Uh, you heard on the witness stand the reasons why a number of these women survivors did not come forward. Uh, they were deathly afraid of Harvey Weinstein, for one thing, uh, and that he would ruin their career. So there's all sorts of dynamics uh, that make survivors of sexual assault not comfortable to come forward. However, those stories are now part of uh, part of what we all now understand better after this trial uh, that survivors have to go through. So, Dean, I think my hope is with this verdict, uh, survivors of sexual assault, whether it's of Mr. Weinstein uh, or whether it's of someone else, uh, will come forward and, uh, and our office and others like our office will, I hope, be there to, uh, to listen to them and to help them move forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day. Well, there we are. That was uh, Cyrus Vance, the district attorney at uh, the court in New York. I think he's the son of a politician from the uh, Reagan era. But he said very clearly that uh, rape is rape, even if it, if it happened a long time ago. And he said today is a new day and a big day. And he said it's a new day because people have been brave enough to come forward. Uh, Ian Woods was listening to that in New York. And Ian, it's interesting. He said that he wasn't disappointed at all with the verdict, um, but he was asked the question about the sentence, and I think the questioner said, look, it could be as little as five years. Are you happy with that? Is that the case? Well, it's a maximum of 25 and a minimum of five. So the truth is that the sentence could be anything between those two points. So they've got to hope that the judge considers that uh, the evidence that he heard during the course of this trial merits uh, the upper figure rather than the lower figure. Otherwise, there will be questions as to whether or not he really is happy. Cyrus Vance, incidentally, yes, the New York attorney, an unusual name. You may be familiar with it if you I remember the U.S. Secretary of State of the same name. He's his son. That's why the name is, is familiar. But what he did there was he name-checked the eight women who gave evidence bravely in this trial and said that they changed the course of history and uh, called Harvey Weinstein a vicious serial sexual predator. Well, he is now in police custody. Uh, there was some uh, speculation that uh, the bail that he has been on during the course of this trial would allow him to uh, go home until he was sentenced. But no, he has been taken into custody, handcuffed. He will not be coming back out of the court that he shuffled into earlier on uh, this morning. And he will be brought back to court on March the 11th when he will be sentenced and we will find out whether it is closer to five years or 25 years in jail. Yeah, and Harvey Weinstein will be behind bars tonight, but I guess there's the possibility that he could appeal um, this conviction. 
Yeah, I mean, we haven't heard from his lawyers yet. I would think it's almost certain that uh, that they will appeal. They will be encouraged by the fact that they did manage to uh, get the jury to acquit him of the uh, two more serious charges, which would carry uh, a maximum term in prison. So I've no doubt when we do for, hear from them, they will be focusing on the two, uh, the three not guilty verdicts rather than the uh, the two guilty ones. But they have still got a client that they hoped would still be a free man at the end of the day, who tonight is going uh, to jail. But uh, that is something that they will. I'm sure be keen to uh, to appeal to see if they can uh, get that conviction uh, uh, overturned but it is a sentence uh, that uh, will be welcomed by the women who come forward to gave uh, to give evidence they've uh, issued uh, a statement tonight saying while it is disappointing that today's outcome does not deliver what they call true full justice that so many women deserve they say that Harvey Weinstein will now forever be known as a convicted serial predator and they talk about the courage of the women who who came to court and waived their anonymity so that their stories could be heard in full. All right, and just finally, Ian, for now, are we expecting to hear from Weinstein's lawyers uh, in the near future? I believe so, yes. I mean, the, uh, the court, uh, the cameras are outside in the courtroom upstairs uh, to capture uh, any uh, comments from people who are coming out. We also expect to hear from Gloria El Allred, who's represented uh, many of the women. But uh, yes, I would have thought that we would hear from Harvey Weinstein's defence team at some point in the next hour. And we'll be right back with you, Ian, for now. Thanks very much indeed. Let's go straight to uh, New York, where Gloria Allred, who is a, uh, a lawyer for some of uh, the uh, victims or alleged victims of, uh, of um, Weinstein, is speaking outside court. Let's have a listen. To challenge the motives of the witnesses and blame them for what the witnesses testified that the defendant Harvey Weinstein did to them. Fortunately, the defense attempts to discredit them were not successful. My clients bravely stood in their truth and refused to be intimidated, bullied, or shamed into substantially changing their testimony about what the defendant did to them. I'm very proud of them. I'm very happy that the jury delivered the verdict that was read in court today as to Mimi and as to Jessica, whom I do not represent. The jury took their time. They asked very thoughtful questions in advance of the verdict, and we thank them for their service on this Hearstar case and for their carefully considered verdict, which I believe is a just result as to Mimi and to Jessica. Harvey Weinstein will now have to finally face the serious consequences of his criminal behavior at his sentencing here in New York on March 11th. The most serious charge is the one that he was convicted on from my client Mimi. For that, he can face 10 to 25 years. And the victim does have an opportunity to speak at the sentencing and give her victim impact statement. And uh, in the event that Mimi is available on March 11th, she and I will be here in order to do that. Donna, he was shot. Maybe you want to respond. That he was what? Okay, good, thank you, that's good. Um, so, in addition, I look forward to seeing him in Los Angeles uh, after the sentencing as he attempts to defend himself against the criminal charges which will face him there. And as I said, I represent Lauren Young, who's one of the two victims for whom charges have been filed in Los Angeles. And she was a Molina witness in this case. I look forward to his sentencing and the next criminal trial in Los Angeles, where, as I said, I'll be representing Lauren Marie Young. And um, this case will continue. I will say this about Annabella. Even though the jury did not find beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Mr. Weinstein, was guilty of a uh, crime against Mimi and a crime against Jessica and sexually predatory conduct. Annabella is absolutely one of the bravest women I know. She sacrificed so much privacy, 
invested so much time, went through so much just for the cause of justice. She didn't have to do it. She did do it. And I'm just so honored to know her and to represent her. The fact that they did not find guilt beyond a reasonable doubt on the issue of sexually predatory conduct does not mean that there weren't members of the jury who did, who, who did, who believed Annabella. Although I have not had an opportunity to speak, nor have I heard any interviews by members of the jury. I have confidence that there were people in the jury, there were members of the jury who did credit Annabella's testimony. It's just that the jury could not find guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the highest burden of proof in the law. It's always possible that, that she was believed, but that the high burden of proof required to find him guilty on sexually predatory conduct is not something that the jury could find. But nonetheless, she's so brave. Susan B. Anthony once said, courage is the best protection a woman can have. And I just can't say enough about her courage through all of this. And I'm also going to say in advance, I know there are going to be many people in Los Angeles who are going to be testifying at the, in the Los Angeles case whom you have not yet heard from and who will also demonstrate courage in testifying in L.A. So I'll, I'll be happy to take some questions. Um, pardon me? If you could talk to him, what would you tell Harvey Weinstein right now? If, if I could talk to Harvey Weinstein, what would I tell him right now? Well, I just heard that his attorney said that he was shocked. And he was surprised by the verdict. Well, he shouldn't have been surprised. If you do to women... What you did to Mimi, what the jury found that you did to Mimi, criminal sexual act, what the jury found that you did to Jessica, you shouldn't be surprised if you have to face criminal consequences for the crimes that you committed against them. You shouldn't be shocked. You should have been prepared for this. It's no longer business as usual in the United States. This is the age of empowerment of women. And you cannot intimidate them anymore because women will not be silenced. They will speak up. They will have their voice. They will stand up and be subjected to your small army of defense attorneys cross-examining them, attempting to discredit them, humiliate them, shame them, and they will still stand in their truth. So Harvey Weinstein, this justice has been a long time coming, but it's finally here, and it's not the end, because L.A. is still going to proceed. And I believe that will happen after the sentencing, that he will be quickly going to Los Angeles. And we're looking forward to seeing him there. I'm sorry? Annabelle, that's Gloria Allred, who was representing uh, Mimi Haley, uh, Weinstein convicted of sexually case, assaulting the former production assistant in 2006 today, and okay, also well, convicted Andrew. of raping Jessica Mann, a one-time aspiring actress. Um, but Andrew. Harvey Weinstein was acquitted on the most serious charge, uh, or most serious charges, so that carried a potential that. life sentence. Who and uh, Justice James Burke message. has ordered that Weinstein will be held in custody and he was put in handcuffs. Much more on all this from New York at the top of the hour.
It's six o'clock, you're watching the news hour. I'm Mark Austin, coming up in the next 60 minutes. Harvey Weinstein found guilty of sexual assault, but cleared of three of the five charges. Eight women who pulled our justice system into the 21st century by declaring that rape is rape and sexual assault is sexual assault, no matter what. Also locked down in Italy, coronavirus spreads further around the world, but experts stop short of calling a global pandemic. But even so, stock markets fall, fearing there's worse to come, with the Dow Jones plunging almost 1,000 points. Also calls for Britain to do more as the crisis in Syria worsens. And Trump at the Taj, the President and Melania at the Monument of Love on day one of the visit to India. Good evening. We begin the news hour with breaking news from the rape trial of Harvey Weinstein. A jury in New York has found the disgraced movie mogul guilty on two of the five charges he faced. They are a criminal sexual act in the first degree and rape in the third degree. In the last hour, New York's district attorney, Cyrus Vance Jr., reacted to the verdicts, describing Weinstein as a vicious sexual predator. Eight women who pulled our justice system into the 21st century by declaring that rape is rape and sexual assault is sexual assault no matter what. Rape is rape, whether it's committed by a stranger in a dark alley or by an intimate partner in a working relationship. It's rape, whether it's committed by an indigent person or a man of immense power, prestige, and privilege. Harvey Weinstein has finally been held accountable for crimes he committed. The women who came forward courageously and at great risk made that happen. Weinstein is a vicious, serial sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate, and silence his victims. And we've also heard in the last few moments from the lawyer representing some of uh, Weinstein's accusers, Gloria Allred. Justice has been a long time coming, but it's finally here. And it's not the end. Because L.A. is still going to proceed. And I believe that will happen after the sentencing. That he will be quickly going to Los Angeles. And we're looking forward to seeing him there. Let's go live to New York, where our correspondent uh, Ian Woods is waiting for us. And Ian, um, this is not straightforward, is it? So talk us through the verdicts. Mark, I can't actually hear you. I don't know whether I am on air, but I'll assume that I am and I'll carry on talking to you. Uh, we're waiting to hear, uh, to bring you some comments from Harvey Weinstein's legal team, uh, but they have said they are confident uh, of uh, an appeal. Let's just remind you what he was found not guilty of, first of all. He was found not guilty of the predatory sexual assault of Miriam Haley and also found not guilty of the predatory sexual assault of Jessica Mann, but he was found guilty of the criminal sexual assault of Miriam Haley and the rape in the third degree of Jessica Mann. Now, uh, that charge of uh, criminal sexual assault carries a minimum of five years in jail and a maximum of 25 years in jail. Shall I stop now? Am I? Hear me now, I don't Ian. know whether I'm on air or not. But Can I'll you hear me now, Ian? Time in case uh, I am. Um, the... Uh, uh, some of the, the survivors have also uh, issued a statement um, uh, to, uh, to back up what was said by Cyrus Vance there, the group known as the Silence Breakers, the group of women involved, said, while it is disappointing that today's outcome does not deliver the true, full justice that so many women deserve, Harvey Weinstein will now forever be known as a convicted serial predator. This conviction would not be possible without the testimony of the courageous women and the many women who have spoken out. To give you an idea of some of the testimony that was involved in this case, and remember, eight of the women who came forward did so waiving their anonymity so that they could speak out fully uh, in court. When she was giving evidence, Mimi Haley said this. 
He was coming towards me physically and I was backed into a bedroom that was on the corner of that open space area. I walked backwards because he was pushing me with his body until I got to the bed and I fell backwards onto the bed and I tried to get up and he pushed me down. She continued, I just said, no, no, I don't want this to happen. Jessica Mann defended continuing to have an ongoing contact with the movie producer. She said, I know the history of my relationship with him. I know it was complicated and difficult, but that doesn't change the fact that he raped me. But his lawyer, Donna Rotono, told the jury, you don't have to like Mr. Weinstein. This is not a popularity contest, but you have to remember that we are not here to criminalize normality. Now, he is looking at a prison sentence of somewhere between five and 25 years, and prosecutors will hope it's toward the uh, far end of that rather than uh, the lower end of the sentencing uh, guidelines. But we won't find out what his sentence is until March the 11th. That's when he's due back in court, but he was not granted bail pending sentence. He was handcuffed inside the court courtroom and is on his way to jail. OK, Ian, thank you very much. It's seven o'clock. This is Sky News tonight with me, Dermot Murnahan, the top story, guilty of rape. The media mogul Harvey Weinstein is tonight in jail. His victims celebrate justice. I think he's just disgusting, vile, <sighs> criminal. Well, Weinstein's disgrace inspired the Me Too movement and perhaps changed gender relations forever, and he has still to face further charges in California. A very good evening. Harvey Weinstein was today led out of court in handcuffs and taken to jail after being found guilty of sexual assault and one charge of rape. He was acquitted of three more serious charges, but after the verdict, the prosecutor said it was now proven the one-time Hollywood titan was a sexual predator. A group representing his victims described the verdict as marking a new era in justice. Well, in a moment, we'll hear extended testimony from women who say they were assaulted by Weinstein. But first, Ian Woods joins me from New York. And uh, Ian, just uh, take us through reaction there. Well, Harvey Weinstein was acquitted of the two most serious charges of uh, predatory sexual assault, but uh, uh, his victims and women who have campaigned and the district attorney all welcomed the fact that he was prosecuted and convicted on other charges, charges which, uh, if, uh, when it comes to sentencing on March the 11th, means he will be going to prison for a minimum of five years and a maximum of 25 years. Cyrus Vance, the district attorney, praising the eight women who came to the court here to give evidence against Harvey Weinstein waiving their anonymity so that their stories could be told in full. Let me give you a flavour of some of the testimony that, uh, that they came up with in court. Uh, Miriam Haley, uh, one of his victims, told the court he was coming f toward me uh, physically and I was backed into a bedroom that was on the corner of that open space area. I walked backwards because he was pushing me with his body until I got to the bed and I fell backwards onto the bed and I tried to get up and he pushed me down. Haley continued, I just said, no, no, I don't want this to happen. Jessica Mann, who was raped uh, by Harvey Weinstein, defended continuing to have contact with the movie producer. She said, I know the history of my relationship with him. I know it was complicated and difficult, but that doesn't change the fact that he raped me. Weinstein's lawyer, Donna Rotono, had told the jury in her closing remarks, you don't have to like Mr. Weinstein. This is not a popularity contest, but you have to remember that we are not here to criminalize morality. Uh, even so, Harvey Weinstein was denied bail. He was led from court in handcuffs and will return here for sentencing next month. I got uh, the reaction of one of his lawyers to those verdicts. He handled it like a stoic gentleman. He just kept repeating, but I'm innocent, but I'm innocent, I'm, in I'm innocent. How could this happen in America? But we'll, we'll, he'll have a very powerful appeal. He didn't get convicted of the top count. We could go in and get him bail pending appeal and hopefully he'll be home within the week. Okay. 
The first stories about Harvey Weinstein began circulating in the media about two and a half years ago. And you may remember a famous audio clip at the time where you could hear the movie producer begging a young woman, pleading with her to come to his uh, hotel room. Well, that young woman was Ambra Batalana Gutierrez, and uh, she is with me now. Ambra, we'll get your reaction to today's verdicts in a moment, but just remind our viewers what happened to you when you encountered Harvey Weinstein. At the moment, I'm super happy. Um, back in 2015, he assaulted me in his office, and um, I reported everything to the police an hour after. And the next day, I collaborated with them to uh, get, put a wire on me and, uh, and then have his confession on record. In, on, on records. So then the situation just uh, went against me, and uh, I had, uh, unfortunately, to live exiled by New York, in, from New York and uh, try to build up my life again. But uh, I kept those recordings, and, uh, of course, in 2017, they then uh, validated all these women, and I'm so happy for it. What's your reaction to the fact that he was only partially convicted today? Not guilty on the two most serious charges of predatory sexual assault, but, but uh, found guilty of other charges. Yeah, I'm waiting for the LA case to start. Um, I'm going to be a witness in there, and hopefully they're going to use those recordings as let's well. Just, let's just remind people that there's another trial facing Harvey Weinstein in yes, California exactly. on two more charges. Yeah. You're going to be a witness there. So yes. I'll, I'll be a witness in there, and I hope I can do something about it, because I feel that this trial in New York was for the other women, and I'm happy for the outcome, but of course, he deserved more, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to do something about it. Do you think this trial really does mark a sea change in how, how the law deals with cases like this? Yeah, I feel that at least this is a positive uh, outcome, and it's, it's like giving the right example for people to believe that right now there would not be uh, any wrongdoing to victims that you know, decide to come forward with with these situations. So I, I really feel this is a start, and from here we have to move forward into not having the situation to happen anymore. And this is what I'm working on. His lawyers argued that any sexual contact was consensual, and not only that, it was transactional, that young women who wanted a career in the movie business benefited from allowing him to behave like this. I... I feel that I can't really answer to, to that for other people, but of course, on my case, um, I never had any, any sort of contact with him after what he did to me. I actually worked with the police, and uh, I never got anything out of it. And of course, I feel that uh, right now, having the support of many other people and working together with the other women, and uh, yeah, it could establish a very good... Um, uh, new future to this type of situations. What would you say about the eight women who waived their anonymity to come into the court and discuss the most intimate details of their relationships in public life? I am uh, very proud of them. I really know what it means going through traumas and opening up scars again, but uh, they did it for helping others and I'm really proud of them. Sum up for us what your feelings are towards Harvey Weinstein tonight. I, I feel that, well, I, I don't know if I have any words. Do you hate him? Mm, if I think for uh, what he did to those women, yes. And the fact that he's now in jail? That's what he deserves. Thank you very much indeed. That's uh, Ambra Batiana Gutierrez who uh, made a recording uh, of... Uh, how Harvey Weinstein was trying to persuade her to go up to her, uh, his hotel room. Uh, one of the many women who's encountered Harvey Weinstein over the years. Someone who was once the, the toast of Hollywood, uh, who's now uh, facing up to at least five years in jail, though his lawyers say they will appeal against those convictions. OK, Ian, many thanks. Ian Woods there uh, live for us outside the court in New York. Well, uh, for years, women alleging sexual assault by Weinstein stayed silent, as we've been hearing Afraid, of course, of the impact speaking out might have on their families and their careers. But once allegations surfaced, dozens came forward. Our US correspondent Greg Milam has been speaking to some of them in Los Angeles about how it feels to see a man they once thought was untouchable now face justice. Harvey Weinstein was once the king of Hollywood, a man with the power to make and break careers and a man who abused that power. 
He said, welcome to the Miramax family. Dozens of women have told their stories, among them Catherine Kendall, Larissa Gomez. Telling it publicly. And Caitlin Delaney. The assaults they allege happened too long ago to result in criminal charges, but they see vindication in his conviction. It is justice. It's, it's um, what should be. And um, it gives me hope, hope, you know, for the future. It feels incredible. It feels like one piece of of this uh, terrible ordeal for so many women, so many people involved is at least in one aspect put to rest. So it feels, it feels like a victory. It feels like justice is served. As of five years ago, it was still a, a secret basically. And to think that now all these women have come forward and the world is, is taking note and that he's actually facing, you know, jail time is, it means that we've really come a long way. I don't think Harvey Weinstein ever thought he'd see this day. He did everything in his power to keep it away. We're the catalyst for this huge movement. The Me Too movement is bringing about a lot of change, a lot of conversation about sexual assault, about equity for women. And I'm grateful that my speaking out along with these women has made a difference. It's kind of a moment of um, like a surge of uh, reckoning in a way. There's a public dissection and, uh, of, of all of the different aspects of sexual violence and abuse of power. A woman should never be afraid to be alone with a man. I mean, a teacher, um, the, the male plumber that comes to your house. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. There is, we're just cultivating more fear and then it's on the woman. And we have to just go around, you know, terrified we're gonna be raped everywhere we go. That's, that's not, that's not okay. That's not right at all. Not only did he commit these crimes, he got away with them for so long. And he harmed so many of us. I mean, it's horrific if you think about it, if you think about this little piece of history. It's hundreds of women. We have finally been heard and believed. And that is worth everything. And I also think it will send a message to perpetrators everywhere that consequences are real. What do you think of Harvey Weinstein now? I'm very angry um, at Harvey Weinstein because this man assaulted me um, and got away with it so many years ago. And I'm angry that he assaulted so many women. I'm angry for every single one of them. Uh, I think he's just disgusting, vile, <sighs> criminal. All along, Harvey Weinstein has denied these allegations, but it doesn't end here for him. He now faces another trial in Los Angeles, a city and an industry he once ruled. Now the stage for the continuing story of his fall from grace. Greg Milam, Sky News. And no doubt plenty more coverage of Harvey Weinstein's conviction uh, in tomorrow's papers. We're taking a first look at them in the press preview at half past ten with the director of the Academy of Ideas, Claire Fox, and the editor of the Times literary supplement, Stig Abel. Right, I want to get more reaction uh, to the Harvey Weinstein guilty verdicts now. Joining me from Canterbury is Dame Heather Roberts, Times Up UK chair. Very good to talk to you, Dame Heather. And uh, first of all, just give me your broad reaction about the significance of these verdicts. Uh, this is a hugely significant moment uh, for the silence breakers who've shown great courage this news comes as a source of relief. I think many didn't believe uh, that he would be found guilty. Uh, and I think that for all of the silence breakers who came forward in this case, but in, indeed for many others, it's, it's a real testimony to if you speak out, 
uh, then justice can be done. Uh, and so it, it, it is momentous. I think we're all literally in shock, um, uh, but also pleased is not the right word because these women have been through such horrific experiences. Uh, but we all recognise that this is a turning point in dealing with issues of harassment and abuse. Would it have been a, a blow to the Me Too movement and, of course, uh, Time's Up if he had been acquitted? Um, th this wasn't a trial about Me Too or Time's Up. This was a trial about Harvey Weinstein and uh, the allegations of rape and assault that were brought against him both in New York and he still faces charges in LA and he's still subject to an investigation here. Uh, this was a movement that was absolutely uh, catalyzed by Harvey Weinstein, but this was a movement that was not going to stop um, after today's uh, decision. Uh Obviously, the fact that he, ha he has been found guilty, however, I think is so important for the women who've shown great courage and we should not underestimate that and we pay huge respect to those women who came forward. Just give us a sense of what has changed since the allegations surfaced and indeed what more needs to be done. I think one of the big changes is about women coming forward and being believed. Uh, we know in rape cases, very, very few rape cases ever come to trial. So I think what it's done is that it now meant that as women come forward that they are being believed uh, and that their allegations are being taken seriously. That is a major shift in, in terms of how these matters are dealt with uh, and that should not be underestimated. I also think for all those other women who are experiencing harassment or abuse uh, it, it's, a, it's a real moment for them to feel that there is a way that they can bring uh, their concerns to the fore. So I think that, 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 has, that is a seismic change. Of course, uh, this is a movement that is still very much in its early days. It has a huge amount of work to do. We are working together um, across both here and our colleagues in America produce guidelines, which I have to say that studios and production companies are welcoming uh, because they want to ensure that when films are made, that those sets are free from abuse and harassment. And so we're, pro we're providing very practical guidance about what that now, what this means and what this involves in terms of tackling these matters so that we don't see again uh, the awful behaviour that has been raised by the Me Too movement um, linked to Harvey Weinstein. But of course it's not, uh, as we all know, it's not just about film studios, the media industry, it's about all businesses, isn't it? It's about all organisations. Absolutely, it's across all sectors. I'm particularly focused on the film and television sector, but Time's Up is across all sectors and from health to the ledger industries to technology. And indeed, we share here in the UK all of our learning and best practice uh, with our colleagues from other sectors. Our guidelines can be used by any sector so that other uh, employees and indeed other companies uh, can ensure that they're adopting the best policy uh, available in order to ensure that their employees are safe from abuse. Dame Heather, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your input, to Heather Roberts there. Thank you very much. Well, hello there, you're watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. In the next half hour or so then, we'll see what's making the headlines with the director of the Academy of Ideas, Claire Fox, and the editor of the TLS, the Times Literary Supplements, Dick Abel. Welcome to both of you, great to see you. Um, front pages then, let us start with The Guardian, leading on the Harvey Weinstein case, saying the former Hollywood producer faces a long jail sentence after being found guilty of sexual assault and rape. That's also the lead story for the Metro with the headline Weinstein locked up at last. And the eye says the guilty verdicts are a triumph for the Me Too movement, with campaigners calling it a new era of justice for sex crime victims. 
The Daily Telegraph reports that British holidaymakers in northern Italy will be told to self-isolate when they return home to try and stem the spread of the coronavirus. The Financial Times says the rise in the number of cases has affected stock markets, with shares in some companies dropping sharply. And the Daily Mail has the story of a suspected murder on the Prime Minister's family estate in Somerset. So, uh, let's talk more with Claire and with Stig. Let's start with Harvey Weinstein. All over the newspapers, not surprisingly, uh, faces a long jail term after being convicted of rape, a third-degree rape, it has to be and said. So the question that, that you mentioned about the eye saying this, but it's the, it's the general remark, is this, he was the face, the sort of awful face of the Me Too movement. The need for the Me Too movement came in response to Harvey Weinstein. He was seen as too powerful to hold to account. Various media organisations backed off from pursuing him because he was seen to be too large a figure. A couple in America, particularly the New York Times and the New Yorker, didn't and sort of carried on exposing these claims against him. And so he's been brought to justice. You can now say confidently, without having to caveat and cavil by saying he denies all allegations, you can say Harvey Weinstein is a rapist. And that is the thing that is being correctly heralded as a triumph. But the one question, yes, more than 80 women have come forward to say that Harvey Weinstein assaulted them uh, over a long period of time. He has been convicted of two counts of rape, the least serious of which that were on the bill of the five against him. So although he has been brought to justice, although we can correctly say he's a rapist, and that is a moment of someone who is seen to be beyond the reach of people accusing him because he was too powerful, he has still not been found guilty for all the things alleged against yeah. him. And therefore, I think the question at least remains open is, is what a triumph this is, considering an awful lot of people have made claims and will feel that they have still not been hurt. And lots of um, suggestions about very aggressive defence and the difficulty of having contact post an episode that is either rape or sexual assault and what that means and how a jury sees that contact that you might have afterwards and, and the fact that that's been brought up by the defence in this case. But clearly he's going to get the top lawyers, as he said. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think we all, everybody deserves an aggressive defence. I mean, I wouldn't want a defence that was half-hearted and didn't bother defending me. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of the rule of law. And I think it's a great triumph for the rule of law that he's been found guilty. I, I don't take it as a triumph for the movement so much as I think it's important that this has been dealt with in the court of law because, sadly for me, too many people in relation to a kind of broader Me Too movement almost seem to want to dispense with the law in terms of finding people guilty. And therefore, I think it's important that he's been found guilty in a court of law, not in the court of public opinion or in the court of uh, the media or anywhere else. This is the right place to be found guilty. And in that sense, it shouldn't be a triumph for a new type of justice, because yeah, if be... justice is functioning properly, which it should be, yeah. everyone has to face charges against them. That's, that's right. I mean, how, I, I how think... Powerful. But that maybe hasn't happened in practice. But I think, I think that what, what is important about this is that obviously somebody who is incredibly powerful and nobody brought to a court of law, or maybe weren't listened to when they tried to suggest that these things had happened, mm. have been heard, but they've now gone through rightful due process. So uh, I, I'm not sure that I... You know, I don't know that... I mean, first of all, I'm not sure that American law works like that, where every 80... I mean, they try the cases that they think are most likely to be successful. There's a lot of accusations. I mean, if he gets sent down for nearly 25 years or 25 years, it's quite a long time. And he's been found guilty now. And, and, one, and it's not the only trial he faces. One in LA, it's not, isn't uh, it? Exactly. But it's also, it's also the case, I think the male have got it, I don't know whether we've got it in front of us, but that he, was, he said, that they're saying arrogance of the monster because it says that he expected to be cleared of sex crimes. Actually, he wasn't the only one who thought he was going to be found not guilty because a lot of worried people in the Me Too movement thought that the evidence was quite thin and were worried that he was going to get off. And so I think that, you know, a, a, the jury were trusted. There are people, I see them saying it, that he never stood a chance of a fair trial. I mean, you, you Anna, were saying, you know, aggressive defence and people to bringing these issues up, like, well, he had contact with people afterwards and therefore is that fair to raise it. But it's also true that everybody thought that Harvey Weinstein was guilty. And so... You could say that in, it was imperfect on all sides in that sense. Yes. I mean, it's not no, as though he went in... Some saying that maybe people look at rape and sexual assault differently. Yeah. And the, the fact of contact after an assault does not no. mean that it was not assault. That's no, I, 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 I agree. But all I'm saying is it's been tricky, this issue, with, in any way. Because yeah. even before it came to court, everybody... You, almost universally, you go around the world and say, what do you think about Harvey Weinstein? And they'd say he's a sexual monster. So what I'm saying is, is that... 
in some ways this feels to me like a satisfactory outcome. He wasn't found guilty on everything, so they studied the evidence carefully. They took five days. It was obviously not glibly decided, and he's been found guilty on two charges. The, uh, the Metro guilty Weinstein locked up at last. Uh, campaigners hail a huge Me Too moment. Uh, certainly, as you mentioned, it is thus. The, the, there's so much more to this case in many respects, aren't there, as opposed to just somebody who commits sexual assault on women. This is the, the nth degree of control over those who maybe wanted a career, what they did about yeah. him and, and how they reacted to it. And, and he has become, correctly, the poster child for every very powerful man abusing a position of authority to, uh, to sort of meet his own sexual desires utterly inappropriate behaviour at the very least and then very serious and appalling criminal behaviour at its very worst. That's why the movement came out about on the back of, uh, of these things. And that's why he stands for something, which is, if we are to take this at its most positive, which is, he was said by many, including himself, to be beyond the reach of this sort of thing. Because people, uh, he could control things, he had friends in very high places, no one wanted to, to rock the boat. So when people said things, they weren't listened to. And one of the things that we've had to deal with culturally in this country and the US, and it's, it's a very difficult pendulum to balance this, which is if you have decades of people not being listened to, you then might have an overreaction to the other side, which is how do you then, how do you then weigh up all claims that then come out the other way? And that's the challenge that I think you're going to say. Yeah, correct, correct, I mean, that's uh, where uh, I get nervous, I suppose, because I, I, I think that, you know, the campaign is hailing this as a new era of justice, which you've already referred to. But they say for, for victims of sexual misconduct. And I think that it's important to note that these were crimes. He's been found guilty of those crimes. And one of the things that I felt queasy about in relation to the Me Too movement that sprang out of this is that any accusation levelled at a, a, a person at work or a boss or somebody in power which has the Me Too hashtag attached to it immediately brings up images of Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. Whereas, in fact, there's been a whole relatively... I mean, talk about a wide range of things that have fallen under the Me Too hashtag. And I have written, and I'm still very concerned about people being treated as innocent until they're found guilty. He's now guilty, that's good. But, I mean, everybody deserves that. And there's also non-criminal activity, and this is where it gets tricky, where there's sleazy behaviour or inappropriate behaviour. I mean, this is what it says, you know, uh, uh, sexual misconduct. What is that? Is that a... It's not a legal term. And so I have become concerned over the time about the way that women have been turned into victims in this story very often even when they didn't want to be. I mean, treated as though all women are victims and a lot of demonisation of all sorts of behaviour, which I think is so a very wide scope. So male behaviour, is that what you Yeah, well, I'm saying there's a wide scope of behaviour that is not serious sexual assault. Because there's some no... Some of which might deserve a good sort of, like, kicking, metaphorically, or, you know, kind of shunning or whatever, some of which is misinterpreted. All I'm saying is you know that Me Too has led to a lot of accusations being bandied around, and I therefore want us to have a certain... The point is there's no due process often for things that fall beneath the criminal threshold but which are socially and personally unacceptable. Yeah. And it's very hard to see what that process would easily be. If it's criminal, if it hits a certain threshold, there should be a very clear uh, process, although the success at prosecuting rape in this country in the US is pretty poor, it's historically been pretty poor, so there's clearly that process isn't always working very well. The distinction, the, the healthy thing about Me Too that I, I think is, and the question of how much this is an overcompensation does still remain, is that if you go from a culture where people have to shut up and put up with things being done to them that are inappropriate in their eyes and in, in my view very often in any objective sense of what is good behaviour, if you have that culture which has subsisted for millennia, hundreds of years or decades, depending on where you want to, to draw the line, it is a broadly beneficial thing that yes. people can raise in public. He did that to me and it's unacceptable and, and, and people and have to And not least with Harvey Weinstein, who did indeed do this for decades, is yeah. the allegation. Yeah. We see him arriving yeah. in court, some people suggesting he didn't even need his walker, that, that looks he knew like a such, moment of drama. That looks like such a con to anybody. It looks like someone... Well, you know, ple whether it's a con or not, it's, it's, you know, seeing him humbled in that way... Well, I mean, I've, I don't want to start accusing people of being, pretending they're dis disabled when they aren't, or I don't know. Yeah. The point is, 
He's a, he's a sexual predator who's now been found guilty. That'll do me. I don't he was need king to... of Hollywood, effectively. Yeah, you know, but, but the head. reason why we're the talking about... things happen. But that's why I'm, I agree. And, I mean, everybody wanted to hang out with him. I mean, that's the other thing about celebrity. Very important people across the political spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's embarrassing photographs of practically everyone. And, by the way, he, of course, he produced loads of good films and now there'll be a big thing yeah. about whether we're allowed to what I watched a film the other night and thought, oh, it's a brilliant film. And, and then it came up with Harvey Weinstein. And I almost, like, looked over my shoulder. I mean, you kind of get this cancel culture. We should be able to, to, to actually we should. art and artist. I think that's a, that's a separate issue that comes yeah. out of a lot but of it, But I, I saw people on, on social media today saying, you know, we've and got to be it, And there it is. He's obviously not allowed it in jail to where he has been oh, sent. he's going to be so. sent. But I just think... You know, my, my only thing is, is that I don't think that... I, I don't think the Me Too movement is something to be totally celebrated. That's what I'm trying to say. I think a lot of things that came out of it are problematic for women and for men and for interpersonal relations and i think that we therefore i don't want to well. yeah but I, all i'm saying is i don't want to be for because that's the other thing is if you say that you can imagine what my social media would be like people will be saying oh you're an apologist for rapists and all the rest of it what i'm saying is i want to be able to make a distinction and and, and a lot of women who've criticized the me too movement by the way have been absolutely rounded on and told to be quiet by certain uh, brands of feminism, where there's only one view allowed. Now, that doesn't feel like liberation okay, to me. OK, you're just saying the scales of everything. Exactly. And, and we and need to be able to discuss these things. Yeah, exactly. I, and, I, and I agree with that. But my, my point is, in, in the way you can criticise it, you can also say there's a salutary effect as well. Yes, indeed. Right. Uh, let's do a bit of domestic politics, shall we? The Home Secretary... Right, let's just uh, bring you up to date with what's happened in New York. Uh, once one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, Harvey Weinstein, has been convicted of sexual assault by a New York jury... Uh, this is, of course, a victory for the Me Too movement that inspired women to go public with misconduct allegations against powerful men. He was once, say, one of Hollywood's most powerful producers, convicted of sexually assaulting a former produ production assistant, Mimi Halley, in 2006, and of rape, the rape of Jessica Mann, a one-time aspiring actress, in 2013. He now faces up to 25 years in prison. He was acquitted on the most serious charge of predatory sexual assault, that carried a potential life sentence. Uh, during his trial, Weinstein, who'd uh, appeared feeble, entering the courthouse using a walker and sometimes uh, leaning on his lead attorney uh, for support, uh, we're not hearing what his reaction was in court. But, uh, as I say, the downfall of one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, Harvey Weinstein, guilty of two counts in his sexual assault trial, Convicted on lesser charges of third-degree rape and a criminal sexual act in the first degree, he was acquitted of the most serious charges against him of predatory sexual assault and first-degree rape. But Harvey Weinstein, a convicted sex attacker. Well, plenty more in the news at five. That's coming up next. Today at five, verdicts start to be returned in New York in the trial of the former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. In the past few minutes, Weinstein was cleared of the most severe charges against him, but found guilty of third-degree rape and sexual assault. We have these images live from the courtroom in New York and the adjacent rooms there. We'll have the uh, latest on those verdicts from our correspondent uh, in just a few minutes' time. It is five o'clock. Our main story is that a jury in New York has started to return verdicts in the case of Harvey Weinstein, the former Hollywood producer. Uh, Weinstein's been convicted of sexual assault and rape, but the jury found him not guilty of the most serious charges of predatory sexual assault and first-degree rape, which would have carried a life sentence. So these are the images uh, from the New York courtroom right now. The jury's been deliberating since last Tuesday, uh, and these verdicts started to come in well, within the last 10 minutes or so, and just outside the courtroom for us there in New York is our correspondent, Ben Wright. Ben, bring us right up to date, if you would, on what's been announced so far. Well, Hugh, the jury rang their bell about 20, 25 minutes ago, telling the court that they had reached a verdict. They've been deliberating for five days, uh, and we discovered 10 minutes ago or so 
that Harvey Weinstein has been found not guilty of predatory sexual assault, as you said, but found guilty of a criminal sex act in the first degree and guilty of rape in the third degree. So incredibly serious charges that he has been found guilty of. Uh, these relate to two women. There were five charges in total that the jury were considering. They related to the claims made by two women. Miriam Haley, a former production assistant, who said that Harvey Weinstein sexually assaulted her in 2006 in his Manhattan apartment. Uh, and the second woman, Jessica Mann, a former actress who testified that Weinstein raped her in 2013 in a hotel in New York. And the jury has uh, decided that, yep, uh, Harvey Weinstein is guilty of a criminal sexual act in the first degree in relation to Miriam Haley and guilty of rape in the third degree in relation to Jessica Mann. What made this, I think, a particularly complicated uh, decision for the jury and a, a complicated verdict sheet for them to grapple with over the last few days is that also part of this trial was the uh, claim of predatory sexual assault. Now, that's the charge that could have had a life sentence attached. Uh, but for the jury to find Harvey Weinstein guilty of a predatory sexual act, they have, had to prove two first-degree sexual assault uh, charges relating to two separate women. And there was a third witness who was brought into this who was critical to that charge, a woman called Annabella Sciorra, a former actress in The Sopranos, who said that Harvey Weinstein raped her in the mid-90s. So the jury has not gone down the route of finding him guilty of a predatory sexual assault but they have found him guilty on those two other very serious charges. Two convictions was the maximum that this, ju that this jury could come up with. He could only be convicted on two counts. Uh, that is what we have done. And it's, uh, it's quite clear that Harvey Weinstein now is looking at a very long time behind bars. Ben, many thanks for now. We'll talk again later, I'm sure. Ben Wright, our correspondent in New York, um, and the uh, live images from inside the courtroom itself. Um, just to recap, we're getting these verdicts in in the case of Harvey Weinstein and Ben was explaining some of those charges and some of the verdicts that we've had. Uh, but with that in mind, let's bring in uh, Mark Stevens, uh, a very prominent lawyer, as we know, specialising in media law, uh, joining us now from his office in central London, who knows a lot about this case. Mark, thanks very much for joining us. Um, what's your immediate response? How, what would you say to viewers that they should be focusing on in this set of verdicts that's come through? I think that uh, these are serious sentences. So whilst uh, the jury didn't want to convict him in relation to the most serious, these are rapes and serious sexual assaults. So um, you might think by described as uh, a sexual uh, assault in the third degree, it sounds like it mili militates against something serious. In fact, it's a very serious offence, and as a consequence, I think uh, an immediate custodial sentence will follow. But with that in mind, let's not forget that he also faces similar uh, sweep of charges in Los Angeles. And so after this case is over, he will move to Los Angeles, and whether or not he's in custody, he will have to stand trial there. And, of course, on top of that, there are also... So some investigations in relation to uh, fraud and inappropriate behavior in relation to the company credit card. And I know that the New York district attorney is still looking at that. So there's, a, if you like, this is just the very first chapter and he has been convicted of some releases. Um, very important to underline the point, Mark, as you've made there, which is that uh, this is the initial stage and that there are, there's more to come, as you say, in L.A. and back in New York again. Um, when you talk about the outcome in terms of the predatory sexual assault, what was the threshold there then that the, the jury had to contend with uh, when they considered their verdict on that very serious charge? Well, at this time of day, it's difficult to describe it in any uh, great detail, but it would have to have been effectively uh, a brute force rape um, in the traditional sense that we understand it. Um, the other types of sexual assault are serious, they are intimate, involved uh, order to achieve it. They may have, he may have used his body weight to pin somebody down uh, and to subject them to 
inappropriate assaults on their intimate areas. Uh, Mark, there's a little delay on the line, but thanks for bearing with us. Um, when you talk about the next stage in Los Angeles, um, again, given what's happened today and given the fact that he's looking at clearly um, a significant uh, prison sentence, um, w what else is there to come up which you can shed light on in terms of the, the cases to come? Well, I think certainly in relation to the Los Angeles cases, they are very similar in nature to the ones that we have here. Of course, a different group of women who went to their local law enforcement in California, and therefore those cases are coming forward. I think also one has got to be clear that um, unlike in... Well, Mark, I'm very sorry. We've just uh, got a little bit stuck there. You kept on catching up, but uh, um, I think we'd better just um, leave that for the moment. And our thanks to Mark for joining us uh, and for sharing his expertise with us. Uh, Mark uh, Stevens there, the, the media lawyer. So this was Weinstein earlier today, arriving in New York, um, ready for this uh, latest stage in the case. And of course, uh, will now have considered the verdicts as delivered by the jury. Um, and uh, as Mark was saying there, and Ben before him, um, being found guilty of some very, very serious charges, um, but not the most serious possibly, which was on this list, which was that of predatory sexual assault. But as Mark was saying, um, Weinstein now will have to go to stand trial in Los Angeles on uh, other charges, similar charges in many ways, and then we'll have to come back to New York to face other charges which are to do with uh, inappropriate behaviour, fraud and uh, uh, other kinds of uh, classes of uh, allegation which he will also stand trial on. So this is, the, uh, this is the live image now from inside the New York courtroom where uh, Ben Wright was reporting from uh, just a short while ago. And if you're just joining us here on uh, BBC News, um, we've had the first set of verdicts uh, in the very long list of uh, allegations which have been set against the former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein um, and uh, guilty of um, rape in the third degree um, and uh, uh, the experts just underlining for us in the past few minutes that um, the most serious charge there of predatory sexual assault was not found guilty on that but still the seriousness of the charges will mean that uh, he will face a uh, uh, a sentence in prison for that. So this is back in 2018 um, when he was making some of those uh, earlier uh, appearances uh, in the initial stages of the uh, uh, of the legal proceedings against Weinstein. Of course one of the biggest scandals and the biggest uh, episodes of uh, wrongdoing that's been reported uh, in terms of the um, uh, Hollywood business, the film business itself. So that's the uh, that's the that's the image there from inside the courtroom and uh, we should get a few other guests to talk to us uh, very shortly including uh, uh, Naomi Wolf who will be joining us uh, on the line. Um, but j just again to recap on uh, what Mark Stevens was tell telling us there, um, it is the case of course that uh, uh, for those of you joining us it is not the end of the uh, of the legal process in terms of Harvey Weinstein. It's just the beginning of the, uh, of the verdicts process because he then has to go and stand trial in Los Angeles and back in New York again. Um, the author and uh, feminist uh, Naomi Wolf joins us on the phone now. And Naomi, it's very good of you to join us today. Um, your initial thoughts on the verdicts that we've heard so far? I mean, I, as, a, as a woman and a survivor, I'm... Uh, astonished and, and pleased, you know, that uh, this um, alleged predator, no longer alleged, that so many women have given harrowing first-person accounts of having been abused or raped or violated by in a myriad of ways, um, has been found guilty, uh, and guilty of rape and criminal sex act. And while headlines are stressing that he's been acquitted of the most serious charges, those most serious charges are they're, you know, extraordinarily serious and involve um, a, a confirmation of two different assaults uh, in two different situations. And so it makes sense to me that um, he's been found guilty of rape and criminal sex act. I'm sure that his victims are, you know, uh, you can never say relieved because their lives have been totally damaged in ways that people never completely heal from, but I'm sure this is indication of those big women who come forward and 
did tell the, their truth about what happened to him. And, you know, finally, I want to say that I've looked at outcomes for rape, and it is so rare, fewer than 12% of rapes that are prosecuted get convicted in the United States. It's fewer than 6% in the U.K., so rapists really have impunity. So the fact that such a, a powerful man uh, was convicted of rape and is now guilty in front of the world of this very, very serious crime is a, a, an important day for justice and for women. Very important day for justice and for women, as you, as you underline. Um, I think it's, it's worth pointing out, Naomi, as well, isn't it, that more than 80 women, uh, because we're dealing here with some cases in, involving two women who brought complaints against him, and uh, they've been you know, vindicated um, uh, into, for the most part, apart from that one other serious charge which I mentioned, um, but, but vindicated certainly. Uh, but there are more than 80 women who have accused him of sexual misconduct stretching back decades. So the verdicts today really are emblematic, aren't they? I mean, I don't, I don't know if emblematic is the right word because every woman's case is different uh, and... I don't believe that this closes the door on many, many other kinds of accountability. I mean, these are just, for instance, criminal charges, and I'm not a lawyer, but I believe that um, all of those women, you know, have the right, unless it's beyond the statute of limitations, to bring civil charges against his estate or against him. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is, as you said before we got on the call, this is really the beginning. It's certainly important that these women who were um, testifying in this case, that in spite of the efforts of the defense to chip away, uh, especially at the status of one of them and to, you know, demean her uh, in, in various ways, um, that that did not stick and that uh, this, this verdict really does say you don't have to be quote-unquote perfect, you don't have to be a nun, you don't have to be you know, someone who has, who, who is unassailable in every single area of her life in order to have the crime against you taken seriously, this very, very serious crime. So I don't think it's emblematic, but I think that it's critically important that, um, you know, as hard as the defense tried to undermine, in some cases, really smear at least one of these uh, victims, um, this jury of men and women said, you know what, you, you don't get to just commit violent criminal acts against people with impunity. So it's a, it's a very important day, and I, don't, I really, really don't want to minimize um, something I think was forgotten in a lot of news coverage, which is that if, if Weinstein had not been found guilty, those victims who came forward and testified, I mean, this is a man who hired Black Cube to go after them, to stalk them, to intimidate them. Uh, those victims would be facing retaliation from Weinstein, very likely, and from these, you know, scary operatives. So it's, it's so important for their safety, you know, for the rest of their lives. Um, and it's an important benchmark. You know, so many men identified as having committed criminal acts as these Me Too you know, allegations have surfaced not just in this case, but in many others, uh, have not yet been convicted. They're walking around free. And this really is, I hope, a sign that you just can't rape people and, and expect to go back to the country club and be left alone by the criminal justice system. Uh, I, no one at all, I don't think, is questioning the huge significance of the, um, and the prime significance of what's happened today. Uh, Naomi, I'm just um, reminding viewers that... Um, uh, that he faces these charges in Los Angeles and then he'll come back to New York to face other charges. Um, when you look at this case, which is, as we say, it's um, the legal process involving Weinstein is still going on and will do for some time, but when you look at this uh, process uh, as it's run so far and the questions it's raised, um, how has it changed public perceptions uh, in the United States about the way that this industry has run in the past? Um. I'm not sure I understand your question. I think that the fact that young women, especially in Hollywood, are, you know, targeted by harassment and abuse and criminal sexual assault is, is well known. Uh, but it's been, it's been dismissed by the criminal justice system and, and often trivialized by perpetrators and their friends and networks. I mean, as everybody has said, you know, Weinstein's behavior was an open secret. And you see this a lot in, in networks 
of powerful men and institutions. I mean, you know, my abuser, not that they're in anything like the same scale, uh, at, at Yale passed away. After he passed away, people came forward um, in that network and said, yes, his behavior was well known. So I don't think this changes the fact that all of us know institution after institution where powerful men are predators and are protected by the institution. What it shows rather is cracks in patriarchy, really, because these institutions have not been successful recently in completely insulating the predators from the criminal justice system now that, you know, I, seven men and five women said, oh, no matter how powerful he is, no matter how many BAFTAs he's won, um, it, 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 he's a criminal and he is guilty. I mean, I think that's what you're seeing. I don't think you're seeing a, a sea change about um, people suddenly realizing that these are crimes or that they're wrong. I think what you're seeing is the willingness of, of the victims to come forward. You're seeing totally, and I speak as a survivor, right, of rape and sexual abuse myself, you're definitely seeing that as more and more women come forward and tell their stories, it's less and less easy for patriarchy to do, you know, use its old tried and true tactic of, well, that's a crazy woman or that's a slut, right? Because if there are millions and millions of us and we are in, you know, everywhere, serious women, accomplished women, moms and, you know, people in the military and, you know, heads of state for that matter, actresses, uh, as well as, you know, women who are more easily dismissed by a sexist and classist society, um, it, 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 more women are willing to say, it is not my shame, uh, I'm going to come forward, you're not going to ruin and silence me. Um, and that does make it harder for these predators to mobilize uh, the institutions around them to bully and intimidate victims with business as usual. And that is huge. I mean, that's just absolutely huge. Look, I, you know, I know Annabella Fiora as, a, as an acquaintance, and it took incredible courage for her in her, you know, 50s, like decades after this violent, horrific assault, incredible courage for her to come forward. But she's not alone. You know, she's got millions of women and men cheering her on and she's not being you know marginalized and trashed right now she's being treated as a heroine as she should be so these are huge changes um but what was missing was uh the criminal justice system behaving appropriately you had uh Cy Vance, you had attorneys general not investigating continuing to cover up so if finally we get a serious conviction, not a trivial one, then it is going to embolden other victims to come forward with other perpetrators. Uh, Naomi, well, very good to talk to you today. And thank you so much for sharing your views with us um, after those uh, initial verdicts there. Thanks very much to uh, Naomi Wolf. And uh, just as we see the uh, live images there from New York, I can tell you that uh, the latest from the courtroom is that uh, Weinstein, the former Hollywood producer, uh, will be held in custody. Uh, he was put in handcuffs and uh, he'll be held in custody according to those uh, who are in court today. And just to remind uh, people just joining us, we are reporting on the fact that the uh, former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of a sexual assault uh, by a jury in New York. Um, and uh, it's of course, as Naomi was saying there, a victory that uh, uh, is one that is being marked by the, the Me Too movement because uh, uh, it inspired women to go public uh, with allegations of misconduct against powerful men. Uh, Weinstein, uh, who is 67, is to be detained therefore and was put in handcuffs in court. Um, this was him arriving earlier today uh, for the verdicts. Um, the verdicts came through about half an hour ago, just maybe a little longer than that, but this was Harvey Weinstein arriving. Uh, at one time, one of Hollywood's most powerful figures. He's 67, um, and he's been convicted today of sexually assaulting a former production assistant, uh, um, Mimi Haley, in 2006, and of uh, raping Jessica Mann, um, who was uh, an actress uh, back in 2013. He faces the possibility of 25 years in prison um, for these convictions. He was acquitted, by the way, of the most serious charge today, of predatory sexual assault, which carried a potential life sentence. But as we were saying earlier, he faces further charges, uh, not in New York, but in Los Angeles, similar ones. And uh, he'll be back in New York as well to face charges of 
uh, fraud. So that's 22 minutes past five here uh, in London, and uh, those are the uh, events there uh, in New York. And uh, if we have more on that for you, and uh, if we have more reaction to the Weinstein verdicts, we'll bring them to you right away here on BBC News. So let's move on to some of the day's other news, because, of course, uh, we... We've just been given one of the district attorney's statement. Is that coming up? Is that coming up? District attorney making a statement after the verdict. Let's have a look. Okay, good. Uh, good morning, welcome. Thank you for, for being here. Dawn Dunning, Miriam Haley, Jessica Mann, Annabella Shora, Carolee Wolf, Lauren Young, Megan Hass, Joan Illusi Orbon. Eight women who have changed the course of history in the fight against sexual violence. These are eight women who pulled our justice system into the 21st century by declaring that rape is rape and sexual assault is sexual assault no matter what. Rape is rape, whether it's committed by a stranger in a dark alley or by an intimate partner in a working relationship. It's rape, whether it's committed by an indigent person or a man of... ...whether the survivor reports within an hour, within a year, or perhaps never. It's rape despite the complicated dynamics of power and consent after an assault. It's rape even if there is no physical evidence and even if it happened a long time ago. This is the new landscape for survivors of sexual assault in America, I believe, and this is a new day. It's a new day because Harvey Weinstein has finally been held accountable for crimes he committed. The women who came forward courageously and at great risk made that happen. Weinstein is a vicious, serial sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate, and silence his victims. He has been found guilty of criminal sexual act in the first degree and will face on that count a state prison sentence of no less than five years and up to 25 years. To the jurors, I want to thank the jurors for their service and careful attention. Their verdict turned the page in our justice system on men like Harvey Weinstein. I want to say thank you to the assistant district attorneys, paralegals, and analysts who worked on this case, including Maxine Rosenthal, Kevin Wilson, Shannon Goldberg, Carrie Dunn, John Irwin, Alyssa Marino, Andy Clark, Danny Mejia Cruz, Stephanie Littell, and Emily Hogan, and especially to Harriet Galvin, Megan Hast, and Joan Luzi Orban, who conducted a terribly difficult and meticulous investigation and performed masterly a trial under the brightest of spotlights. And finally, to the survivors of Harvey Weinstein. I owe and we all owe an immense debt to you who had the courage beyond measure to speak your story to the world, to this courtroom, at great personal risk and in great personal pain. To those of us who were privileged to be in the courtroom when they testified, you know what I mean. These survivors weren't just brave, they were heroic. Words can't describe adequately the sacrifices the survivors made to pursue justice. Weinstein, with his manipulation, his resources, his attorneys, his publicists, and his spies, did everything he could to silence the survivors. But they refused to be silent. They spoke from their hearts, and they were heard. They were heard by Weinstein's other survivors and by sexual predators all over the world. They sacrificed their privacy and self-protection, knowing better than anyone the extent of Weinstein's power, manipulation, retribution, and abuse. 
To them, I would say, you broke silence to hold him accountable. And believe me when I say that because you have done so, a generation of sexual assault survivors and all of us heard your every word. Thank you. I'll take a couple of questions. Sir, are you fully satisfied with this verdict, or do you feel in some way you came up short? You just mentioned it could be as little as five years. Well, I'm certainly not dissatisfied by the verdict. I think this was a very difficult case, uh, a very challenging case, uh, and a case that uh, really moved our understanding of what sexual assault is, where it can occur, shattered myths that I think have been part of the criminal justice system for a long time. So I believe a B felony conviction with a maximum of up to 25 years uh, is, uh, is, it, it is not the top counts in the indictment, but by no means uh, do I, am I disappointed uh, with the jury's unanimous statement that Harvey Weinstein is guilty of sexual assault and rape. Any other questions? Uh, some of the women like Annabella Shore and uh, Jessica Mann, it appears the jury repudiated their testimony. Do you have any concerns that women are going to have to endure such terrible cross-examination that they endured at the hands of Weinstein's lawyers? Well, I think with regard to Jessica Mann, Harvey Weinstein was, commit, was convicted for rape in the third degree. Uh, uh, Ms. Shiora took great risk and was in substantial pain testifying about what happened to her uh, many years ago. I can't look behind the jury's verdict uh, or how they arrived at that. Uh, we have to respect that process. But by no means is it a statement uh, against Ms. Shiora or uh, against anything that she said in court. Jurors find a way through to a solution that they believe adequately brings them all together with a unanimous verdict. In terms of the cross-examination, uh, I think we saw cross-examination uh, that the kinds that we've seen for years and years and years. I hope that with this verdict, uh, it will become more obvious that those kinds of attacks on the, on the survivors and victims when they're on the stand, uh, making it seem like it's all their fault uh, will be realized as legal attacks that just simply are no longer going to work in this day and age, and it's time that lawyers stop using them and continuing uh, the myths uh, that I think the jury verdict busted today. Yeah, Vance, what's your message to women about coming forward? Because someone's question, why did it take for women so long to come forward? What's your message to women who may be attacked, whether it's today or last year? What's your message Well, today? first of all, I would say that uh, Dean, with this, it was Dean, right? Uh, with, with, this, with this verdict, uh, I hope that survivors will see that in this justice system, prosecutors, judges, and juries will believe them. Uh, even when the facts are not simple, and even when the dynamics of the relationships between the survivors and the abuser are complicated. So I think, Dean, the message is this is a big day. This is a new day, and I hope women will uh, I hope women will understand the significance of the jury verdict uh, today. Uh, in terms of the time it takes to report a sexual assault, Dean, you know, we cannot put ourselves in the shoes of a victim of sexual assault to understand what is going through his or her mind. Uh, you heard on the witness stand the reasons why a number of these women survivors did not come forward. Uh, they were deathly afraid of Harvey Weinstein, for one thing, uh, and that he would ruin their career. So there's all sorts of dynamics uh, that make survivors of sexual assault not comfortable to come forward. However, those stories are now part of, uh, part of what we all now understand better after this trial uh, that survivors have to go through. So, Dean, I think my hope is with this verdict, uh, Survivors of sexual assault, whether it's of Mr. Weinstein uh, or whether it's of someone else, uh, will come forward and, uh, and our office and others like our office will, I hope, be there to, uh, to listen to them and to help them move forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day.
That was the District Attorney of New York, that was Cyrus Vance Jr., uh, giving his response to the uh, verdicts there and um, paying tribute to those who've been part of the case. And uh, more important than anything, paying tribute to the women who came forward, uh, often in very difficult circumstances, um, to give their testimony against this man, Harvey Weinstein, who has been convicted today on some very serious charges and could be facing up to 25 years in jail. Uh, simply on today's verdicts, there are other cases yet to come. Now, outside the courtroom in New York is our correspondent, Ben Wright. Ben, we spoke earlier about uh, the verdicts as they came through. Um, tell us a little more about the reaction and uh, what you've gathered there, not least in the light of what the district uh, attorney had to say. Well, I mean, Cyrus Vans there, delighted that uh, the case that he assembled and brought against Harvey Weinstein in this New York court uh, has ended with these guilty verdicts. I think there was quite a lot of pressure on him. He, uh, he pursued it aggressively and assembled quite a complicated series of charges against Harvey Weinstein that he would hope that he hoped would maximize uh, convictions. Uh, and that is what has happened. Uh, as we've been talking about, Harvey Weinstein hasn't been convicted on perhaps the most serious conviction on this list, which was predatory sexual assault. For the jury to have gone down that road and fa find him guilty would have required them to decide that he had committed two first degree sex act acts against two separate people. They haven't done that, but they have found him guilty of a criminal sex act in the first degree against Miriam, uh, concerning the case of Miriam Haley and guilty of rape in the third degree, uh, and that relates to Jessica Mann, both of whom gave you know, very emotional, uh, tearful uh, evidence as they took the witness stands, recounting the trauma that they had experienced at the hands of uh, Harvey Weinstein. He, of course, said nothing during the course of this trial. He sat there and let uh, his defense team do the work, calling their own uh, witnesses to testify on his behalf and try and discredit the, wit the, wit the witnesses uh, on the stand. Uh, he, as the, as the verdict was read out, apparently was pretty impassive. Uh, you couldn't tell what he was thinking. He was handcuffed though and immediately taken into custody. He's gone straight to prison. I read it earlier, I think it was Reuters that said this morning Harvey Weinstein breakfast at the Four Seasons Hotel, a very fancy place here in Manhattan, uh, before coming down to the courtroom to see whether or not the jury had found uh, a verdict had, had reached a decision. He has now gone straight to prison. Sentencing will happen on March the 11th, so we're not clear yet and won't for a little bit longer how long he's looking at behind bars, but it could be up to 25 years. Uh, ben, many thanks again. Ben Wright there for us for the latest outside the court in New York. And uh, if there's any more reaction, including from some of those involved in the case, um, which may indeed occur in the next few minutes, we'll come back to it straight away. Um, so we're expecting some statements outside the courtroom, as you can see there, all the microphones in place. Um, but as soon as uh, people appear, we'll be back there. But in the meantime... He was once the king of Hollywood. Now Harvey Weinstein is found guilty of rape and sexual assault. He was cleared of two of the most serious charges, but still faces years in jail. It's no longer business as usual in the United States. This is the age of empowerment of women. And you cannot intimidate them anymore. The record will show, the history books will show, that Harvey Weinstein is a convicted rapist. Vindication at last for his female accusers. This has just happened in the last hour. We'll have the latest from the court in New York. Our other main story tonight. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at six. In the last hour, the movie producer Harvey Weinstein, once the most powerful man in Hollywood, has been found guilty of rape and a criminal sexual act by a court in New York. He's likely to face a long time behind bars. But the jury cleared him of two of the most serious charges which could have carried a life sentence. The allegations against Mr Weinstein sparked the Me Too movement, which inspired women around the world to take a stand against abuse. Our North America correspondent Nick Ryan is in New York for us. And Nick, this verdict will be seen as a vindication for the women who've stood up against the man, what's known as the King of Hollywood. 
Yes, it will. For weeks we have seen Harvey Weinstein shuffle in and out of this courthouse, but not tonight. He has been handcuffed and taken to the cells. Tonight he will spend uh, the night in jail, the first one suspects of many. And he was apparently showed, showed very little emotion as the verdict was delivered, but looked more dumbfounded as his hands were placed in those handcuffs, as he was found guilty on two out of the five charges against him. For years, he was the king of Hollywood, a movie mogul who acted like he owned the red carpet. But Harvey Weinstein cut a feeble figure during his trial in New York, shuffling into court each day to listen to the tearful and often traumatic testimony of his female accusers. The one-time aspiring actress Jessica Mann accused him of raping her in a New York hotel room in 2013. And the production assistant, Mimi Haley, said he'd sexually assaulted her in 2006. Today, Harvey Weinstein was convicted of two of the five charges against him, of sexual assault on Mimi Haley and of raping Jessica Mann. But he was acquitted of the three most serious charges against him that could have sent him to prison for the rest of his life. I believe a B felony conviction with a maximum of up to 25 years uh, is, uh, is, it, it is not the top counts in the indictment, but by no means uh, do I, am I disappointed uh, with the jury's unanimous statement that Harvey Weinstein is guilty of sexual assault and rape. My clients bravely stood in their truth and refused to be intimidated, bullied, or shamed into substantially changing their testimony about what the defendant did to them. I'm very proud of them. I'm very happy that the jury delivered the verdict that was read in court today as to Mimi and as to Jessica, whom I do not represent. What are you thinking about testifying? You didn't have to. You didn't have to. Harvey Weinstein chose not to testify in his own defense and left it to his team of lawyers to sow seeds of doubt. They claim the sex was consensual, citing warm emails and other communications with his female accusers that continued for months after the alleged attacks. The evidence presented in this case was anemic at best. If his name was not Harvey Weinstein and it was John Doe, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office would have never brought these charges. This has been a milestone moment for the Me Too movement, a test of whether the US criminal justice system would be an ally. It's a mixed verdict, but Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of rape and sexual assault. He said one thing, but it was what she said that mattered. This verdict will reverberate around the world, and we are getting reaction from many of Harvey Weinstein's female accusers. Uh, while it is disappointing that today's outcome does not deliver the true full justice that so many women deserve, Harvey Weinstein will now forever be known as a convicted serial predator. This conviction would not be possible without the testimony of the courageous women and the many women who have spoken out. Uh, the prosecutors did not get guilty verdicts on, on five, they got guilty verdicts on two. As I said, the record, the history books will show that Harvey Weinstein is a convicted rapist. Nick Bryant in New York, thank you. You're watching Beyond 100 Days. He had breakfast at the Four Seasons, but dinner will be in jail. Harvey Weinstein is found guilty of sexual assault and one count of rape. He was acquitted of the most serious charges against him, but still faces a maximum of 25 years in prison. It's being hailed as a landmark case for the Me Too movement and a new landscape for survivors of sexual assault. Weinstein is a vicious, serial, sexual predator who used his power to threaten, rape, assault, trick, humiliate, and silence his victims. My clients bravely stood in their truth and refused to be intimidated, bullied, or shamed. Growing fears that it won't be possible to stop the spread of coronavirus across the world. In Italy, the number of cases rockets and 11 towns are put into quarantine. Also on the program. Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Fleury in Washington. James Reynolds is in London. 
Harvey Weinstein, once the most powerful man in Hollywood, has been convicted of rape and sexual assault against two women. But the jury of seven men and five women acquitted him of two of the most serious charges at his trial in New York. The guilty verdict is a dizzying fall for the Hollywood producer, whose trial was a landmark moment in the Me Too movement. A lawyer for Mr. Weinstein says that he will appeal. He now faces up to 25 years in prison. This report from our correspondent in New York, Nick Bryant. For years, he was the king of Hollywood, a movie mogul who acted like he owned the red carpet. But Harvey Weinstein cut a feeble figure during his trial in New York, shuffling into court each day to listen to the tearful and often traumatic testimony of his female accusers. The one-time aspiring actress Jessica Mann accused him of raping her in a New York hotel room in 2013. And the production assistant, Mimi Haley, said he'd sexually assaulted her in 2006. Today, Harvey Weinstein was convicted of two of the five charges against him, of sexual assault on Mimi Haley and of raping Jessica Mann. But he was acquitted of the three most serious charges against him that could have sent him to prison for the rest of his life. I believe a B felony conviction with a maximum of up to 25 years uh, is, uh, is, it, it is not the top counts in the indictment, but by no means uh, do I, am I disappointed uh, with the jury's unanimous statement that Harvey Weinstein is guilty of sexual assault and rape. My clients bravely stood in their truth and refused to be intimidated, bullied, or shamed into substantially changing their testimony about what the defendant did to them. I'm very proud of them. I'm very happy that the jury delivered the verdict that was read in court today as to Mimi and as to Jessica, whom I do not represent. What are you thinking about testifying? He didn't have to. He didn't have to. Harvey Weinstein chose not to testify in his own defense and left it to his team of lawyers to sow seeds of doubt. They claim the sex was consensual, citing warm emails and other communications with his female accusers that continued for months after the alleged attacks. The evidence presented in this case was anemic at best. If his name was not Harvey Weinstein and it was John Doe, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office would have never brought these charges. This has been a milestone moment for the Me Too movement, a test of whether the U.S. criminal justice system would be an ally. It's a mixed verdict, but Harvey Weinstein has been convicted of rape and sexual assault. He said one thing, but it was what she said that mattered. Nick Bryant, BBC News, New York. Well, let's get the latest now from our correspondent, Ben Wright, who is outside the courthouse in New York. Uh, we can hopefully cross there. No, I think we may have lost the line to him. Hopefully we'll get back to that uh, in a short while. Of course, uh, a lot of news coming out from there at the moment, and we've been hearing from some of the lawyers. Uh, in fact, I'm told that we do have Ben. We got him. Uh, so we can cross to him now. Uh, Yes, Ben, uh, thank you for joining us. Look, uh, one of the things we just heard there in Nick's report was that the final word in some ways went to the women of this case. Uh, yes, I mean, it, for, for them, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a harrowing and long ordeal for the women who testified at this uh, trial, in particular Miriam Haley, the former uh, production assistant who uh, said that Harvey Weinstein had sexually abused her um, assaulted her, beg your pardon, in 20, 2006, and Jessica Mann, who accused Harvey Weinstein of rape in 2013. Now the jury found they believe their testimony, and that is why Harvey Weinstein has been convicted today. But it was very difficult for those two women in particular, I think, giving evidence during the course of this trial. Uh, six women in total appeared on, for the prosecution. Uh, the defense had tried to argue throughout this case that they were unreliable witnesses, uh, because there had been a degree of consensual relationship uh, either side of the uh, assaults and the rape and uh, they pin their hopes on that convincing the jury that this wasn't sexual assault and rape but in the end uh, they couldn't and uh, as you have been saying Harvey Weinstein now is going to prison for a considerable amount of time. We'll discover what the sentencing will be on uh, March the 11th. And we understand he was taken 
from court uh, basically not released. What was striking to me is that here you have the case of a very powerful figure uh, being found guilty of, of sexual assault and rape. Uh, we saw previously Bill Cosby, another powerful figure, being found uh, guilty. What kind of message does this send? Well, as the district attorney of New York who brought this case uh, to the court said after the verdict, you know, he hoped that this, as well as entirely vindicating uh, the stories, the, the, the witness testimony put, through, put in the court uh, by the two women, he hoped that its ultimate effect would be to encourage other women to trust the criminal justice system. Because, you know, since the uh, allegations around Harvey Weinstein uh, were published in the New York Times, in October 2017. There, of course, after that were a flood of uh, accusations made about him, uh, questions about his sexual behavior that came from uh, more than 90 uh, women. Very few of those, uh, well, none of those so far have reached the criminal court. And I think many people did see this case uh, not, as a, not only as symbolically important, but sort of in legal terms, absolutely vital to show that you could put uh, these arguments about um, uh, uh, rape uh, and, and sex, sexual harassment in front of a court and to get a prosecution and a guilty verdict. And I think that is why this is, this is so important. And the hope of the prosecutor certainly is that it will encourage other people to trust the criminal justice system. Ben Wright, outside the courthouse in New York, thank you so much for joining us. Well, the allegations against Harvey Weinstein sparked a worldwide movement with the hashtag MeToo. Many other women in show business and other walks of life came forward with their own stories of rape and sexual assault. Speaking just after the guilty verdicts in New York, District Attorney Cyrus Vance hailed a new dawn towards attitudes towards rape and sexual assault cases such as this one. Rape is rape, whether it's committed by a stranger in a dark alley or by an intimate partner in a working relationship. It's rape, whether it's committed by an indigent person or a man of immense power, prestige, and privilege. Rape is rape, whether the survivor reports within an hour, within a year, or perhaps never. It's rape, despite the complicated dynamics of power and consent after an assault. It's rape, even if there is no physical evidence and even if it happened a long time ago. This is the new landscape for survivors of sexual assault in America, I believe, and this is a new day. Well, let's hear now from someone who accused Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault, the model and actress, Amber Batalana Gutierrez. That complaint didn't result in any charges, but Ms. Gutierrez told reporters how she had involved the police. Back in 2015, I was assaulted and I went to the police an hour after. I, the next day, worked with an undercover operation with the police to record him a meeting, what he did to me, and uh, nothing then was brought to, to, to justice. So I could say that right now I'm happy to see that um, those years that I lost of my life are getting back. Of course, there is a lot of work to do. And uh, I'm here to, you know, be in there and speak to people so that a situation like this would never happen again. And, uh, yeah, this is my mission right now. <sighs> What's next? Um, also this uh, Friday, I'm, um, I'm working with um, organizations that would try to uh, uh, push the survival, uh, Adult Survival Act and that would try to um, open um, um, an, a window for the statute of limitation so that adults, if they feel right now they wanted to you know, reopen their cases, uh, that could be possible because we need justice, we need to feel that our life gets back and um, that's something that it's very in need for now to, to try to do. Ms. Gutierrez, speaking of us earlier, well, we spoke to Douglas Wigdor, the lawyer representing Tara Leigh Wolf, who was a witness in the trial a few moments before coming on air. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Uh, talk us through, what is your reaction to this verdict, which after all is a split verdict? Well, I think it's a, the verdict actually is very positive because 
At the end of the day, this jury found in favor of both victims, the two main victims of the case, both Jessica Mann and Mimi Haley. And Harvey Weinstein did not walk out of the courthouse today. He was remanded. He's facing a prison sentence of up to 25 years on Ms. Uh, Haley's count, and he's facing up to four years on Ms. Mann's count. So when all is said and done, yes, we would have liked to have received a verdict on the predatory sexual assault, the A felony that would have given him a life imprisonment. I think most people, including myself, are very satisfied with this verdict today. Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance came out and basically praised the women who came forward and who testified at this trial. Your client was one of them. Uh, give us a sense, what has her reaction been? Well, I just spoke with my client, Tara Lee Wolf. She was one of the three witnesses that testified in support of the two main victims and also in support of Ms. Skura. And, you know, she's very happy that Harvey Weinstein now is being held accountable for his actions. Of course, that's not going to undo what he did to her, and it's not going to undo anything that, that he did to other women as well. But today is a form of justice. He is now behind bars. He will be for a long time. And I think at the end of the day, what really put this case over the top was the testimony from six separate women. And while the defense tried to make up excuses and tried to cross-examine the various different witnesses, at the end of the day, the jury was left to deliberate and talk about six women. And it's very difficult to discredit six separate women. Looking at this verdict, what kind of message might this send to other women who might be wrestling with whether or not they should come forward, not just with this case, but in other cases? Well, I think it sends a strong, a strong statement that, first of all, rape and sexual assaults usually don't happen in, in instances where you're in a dark alley or you're held at knife point or gun, gun point. And these sorts of things usually happen with people that you know or people in power in the employment setting or, or in a setting such as this. And I think today's verdict really sends a message that women can stand up, they can get the support of the prosecutor, that their voices will be heard, and that ultimately a jury of their peers, 12 men and women, um, can find them to be credible despite the fact that there um, may have been in, in a separate time what we would call issues or, or rape myths about people remaining in contact with the predator after the sexual assault or rape. And women can now, and men for that matter who are sexually abused, can come forward and know that they, their voice can be heard and that a conviction can happen even to a powerful man such as Harvey Weinstein. Douglas Wigdor outside the court there in New York.